This video is brought to you by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Outdoors Delmarva covers everything outdoors. Including real hunting and fishing situations involving wildlife. We do our best each and every week to keep it tasteful, but discretion is advised. Now, enjoy the show. This is Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. This week on the show. Fun, for sure. And we're at it again. The fishing's been so good, we had to come back for more. We're out here rolling around in the rough seas. There's some familiar faces that'll hopefully catch some big stripers. Good job, Joel. Thanks, man. Thanks. <laughs> Plus, we're going to take some of that fresh rockfish to a local chef who puts a gourmet twist on some of the best seafood the Chesapeake has to offer. I'm almost left speechless here because this is just fantastic. Eastern shoremen are a breed unto themselves. And just what makes an Eastern shoreman unique? We'll take a look back at one of Scorchy's most treasured stories. Right now on Outdoors Del Marva. This is Outdoors Del Marva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. And now, here's Andrew Toggs. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Andrew Toz, and we'll be checking in with my partner, Captain Willie Dykes, in just a minute. Well, we decided to come back out and do it again because the fishing was just so good last week. We're back out here on the bay in search of some monster stripers. And as you can see, once again, we got some nice three-foot seas that are keeping us rocking and rolling out here. But we were hoping that we'd be rolling in some rockfish before the day was over. We don't start out rolling, at least not in the canal that leads out of Goody's Marine in Golden Hill, Maryland. The rain is falling, but no one is holding on for their lives. That is until we pass under the lower Hooper's Island Bridge. Then we are at the mercy of the Chesapeake Bay. It's been a lot of weather. Uh, a lot of fish has still been up in the river, so it's been a slow bite, you know. Acts like it's starting to pick up a little bit now, you know. Got another rainy uh, southeast wind day. We went out with this same group nearly two years ago when the sun was shining, but the bay was still rocking that day. Seven trophies were hauled in, and these guys are hopeful for similar results, especially Joel Tice, who's rock fishing for the first time today, and he's up first. Well, I got the opportunity to come out here to do this, and so well, I'm sure it's going to be a lot different, but pretty excited about it. Captain Phil Goody gets the lines out once we arrive at Cove Point across the bay, where the southeast winds are giving everyone's sea legs a workout. I hate to roll everybody, but you know, side to it is how we've had to catch them. Yeah, I have to remember that this might seem like a little bit of an adverse day to some, but for a lot of people that work out here, this is just daytime on the bay. With trolling underway, anticipation outweighs anxiety as we wait for the first strike. Joel outfits himself with the fishing belt, and he's all set. Thinking I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of bait fish there. But the fish do not seem to be hungry. And of course, when playing the waiting game, the best thing to do is get out the snacks. Right now it's a race to see if we catch a fish before Andrew runs out of food. The food has definitely got a head start, because I have been chowing down since we got on the on board. <laughs> While some of the guys are waiting, they fall victim to the ultimate tease that Captain Phil has aboard the fish magnet, a photo album, solid full of proof of past anglers' triumphs over the trophy rock. 18 lines are out, and as the hours roll by with the rise and fall of the boat, Ricky reveals what needs to be done should the fish not show up. If it doesn't happen, then you have to call them in to the boat, and that, uh, that goes something like, here, fishy, 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 fishy. There's no better strategy than a song like that. And believe it or not. Hey, he's fishing on. Go, hey. go, go. The fish is on, and Joel, first time rock angler, is ready. Come <laughs> on, come on. Fun, for sure. I'll tell you what, I'm glad I didn't do box set work out of the gym today. I need a breather. 
before we can get the camera lens dried off, another fish is on. Number two is in, we get another break in the action, as the fish seem to have moved on. The guys start chanting again, but to no avail. The bait's disappeared now, so you gotta kinda look for the bait, the fish probably won't be far away. As we get a little closer to the LNG gas terminal off Cove Point, some feathered friends are spotted, and so are some rockfish breaking the surface. Bait fish are all over the fish finder, and Captain Phil trolls right through the birds. Hey, fish on, fish on, get on the back line, fish on. But at only 22 inches, this one has to go back. In a couple of weeks, it will be a keeper, just not today. With the hour growing late, we start trolling back to port. We'll go over here by the buoy here and give it one little shot here. Maybe we can pick up a few couple of nice ones to go with what we have. I'm used to freshwater fishing, and, and uh, this is a whole different ball game. You know, it's kind of like going from T-ball to the major leagues, and so my fish took quite a while to, to drag in, and. Uh, you know, it's an experience I'll, I'll never forget. It's really fun. With nightfall approaching, the lines are reeled in one by one, and everyone realizes two fish are better than none. But Doug, third man up, remains optimistic until the end. Never over until we reach the docks and still try to get in there. And believe it or not, with nearly all the lines in, <laughs> we have a fish on. Well, I tell you, the fat lady didn't sing yet, did she? Where do you think the day's done? It's not. Every moment, even up to the last minute. Nice looking fish. The last minute action is definitely what that was. They had pretty much all the lines in, I think, except for two. And all of a sudden, the fish was on and got him in, and I guess that's it. <laughs> they say that any day out on the water is a good one, but this last minute catch has made it an amazing day. Get outdoors, Delmarva. And coming up next on the show, we've still got rockfish on the brain, so we're going to go from the bay to the table with a mouthwatering recipe. But first, did you know? Between April and June, rivers and streams feeding the Chesapeake Bay provide spawning grounds for many Atlantic rockfish. How long, on average, do the juvenile stripers born in the bay stay put before venturing out to sea? The answer when we return. You're watching Outdoors Del Marva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Sponsored by Ocean City Tourism. Shorts Marine. Shooter's Choice. Sussex Outdoors. And Aurora Agronomy. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. Did you know? Juvenile rockfish will spend an average of three to five years in the Chesapeake Bay before venturing out to sea and have an average lifespan of 30 years. Did you know is sponsored by North Bay Marina. finally here on steady ground and we're not rolling around out on the bay anymore and if you're fortunate enough to bring home one of these trophy rockfish we're in a great place to figure out how to prepare it that's right andrew it was a beautiful fish and we're here with chef jim hughes a restaurant 213 in fruitland nice maryland Thank you. and jim's going to show us a recipe that will do it justice jim what do you call this dish it's gonna be a uh, rockfish 213 it's one of our signature dishes here uh it's, it's a classical french presentation and it's a beautiful dish, and this rockfish is so pretty. No doubt you caught that recently. Okay, here we go. I have my ingredients. We have jumbo lump crab meat, some fresh garlic, tarragon, sun-dried tomatoes, a little bit of shallots, parsley, and butter. A little white wine, and I'm ready to go. The first thing I want to show you, we take our fish, and I just want to put a little bit of salt and pepper on top of it. And I'm going to add a little bit of uh, your favorite white wine. And make sure, whatever wine you use, you have to be able to drink that. If you can't drink it, don't use it, okay? Then I have a little bit of uh, some clarified butter or olive oil. And I'm just going to put that over, over the top of it. 
And that's it. And that's going to go into the oven for about seven to eight minutes. About 350, 375 degrees. We want to get it really hot and put a nice little coating on top of it. Okay. So the next part is we take our white wine in a saute pan, fresh tarragon. I like a lot of tarragon. And then my shallots, about two tablespoons of shallots. We want to reduce this. We want to cook this down till it's just about, it's called sec, S-E-C in French means dry. So we want to bring it down to that, that stage. This is important because if it's not, it's going to be a little too thick. As you see, it's started, starting to reduce. And it's going to be about three quarters of the way down. Now after it's down to that sec, I'm going to add my heavy cream. And I'm going to add about three cups of heavy cream. Again, just a little bit of salt and pepper. And then set that aside. My next item is going to be the sauce. We're going to finish it off. I made my base. Now I'm going to create the sauce. So the first thing I want to do is add that reduced sauce to the saute pan. About two and a half ounces per fish, per portion. I have my sun-dried tomatoes. If you don't have sun-dried tomatoes, you can use regular uh, fresh tomato. A little bit of uh, fresh parsley. And then I'm just going to let that cook off for a second. As it comes back to a boil, and then I'm going to add a little bit of fresh butter in there. It's called multi au beurre. I'm just going to have some cold butter. I'm just going to put maybe a quarter cup of butter in there. And then we're going to just work that butter in. The butter is going to give it a velvety cream texture. And just let that cook for about three to four minutes. Now I add my jumbo lump crab meat. And as much as you like. So I'm going to put about a cup in there. All right. So never, never enough. <laughs> and then that's it, finished. And now, to complete the dish, I have some fresh spinach that I sauteed, and I'm gonna give you a trade secret that I don't tell everybody. I use Pernod. Pernod is a French liquor. We cook spinach here at 213, and, and we have guests that come in and say, we hate spinach. And they come back and say, it's the best spinach I've had in my life. And that's it. Now to set the dish up, I'm gonna put the spinach on the bottom of my beautiful dish here. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Just smell that the aroma. Okay, go over to the oven. I have my rockfish. That is just beautiful. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. <laughs> Look how pretty that rockfish. It just smells like the, the sea, the ocean, the bay. And that goes on top. And then we come over with our wonderful sauce. And you just make sure you get all your great ingredients here and set that over top. Uh, yeah, look at that. And then I just take a little bit and just drizzle the plate. Only at 213 to find that. Well, Willie, I think I'm going to grab the first one, all right? Come on, I'll arm wrestle your boy. Really? Uh, oh, thank you, Jim. Yeah, thank you, Jim. Willie, go. you do the honors. Yeah, consider it done. <laughs> well, the wind and the rain and the sore cranking arm all goes away. The key is, when you bake that in the oven, the oven's really hot. 350, 375, convection is the best. It puts a nice crust on top, seals in all that natural juice from the, from the ocean or from the bay. <laughs> I'm almost left speechless here because this is just fantastic. <laughs> you notice my hat's off to this dish here. All the best tastes of Del Marva. Perfect. And coming up next on the show, find out what makes an Eastern Shoreman unique on this week's Scorchy's Corner Classic. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. You're watching Outdoors Del Marva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. There's definitely something special about living between the ocean and the Chesapeake. And on this week's Scorchy's Corner Classic, we take a closer look at those that live and work here, better known as Eastern Shoremen. There's no getting around it. Eastern shoremen are a breed unto themselves. There's something about living between the great waters of the Chesapeake and the Atlantic that tends to make us different. And something here that brings in outside people to live. A few of whom try to save us from ourselves, but most of whom just settle down and become different, just like us. The typical Eastern shoreman is very close to either one of two things, the land, or the wool. 
and he would usually prefer to work 70 hours a week for himself than 30 for someone else, simply because he values the satisfaction of running things as he sees fit. Oh yes, he's an independent cuss who refuses to be rushed and often disturbs language purists by saying such things as there's a mouse in the house or ain't ye eat yet. The typical Eastern shoreman is obsessed with a fierce local pride. He loves his volunteer fire department, will challenge anyone who degrades his hometown, will talk about his long departed ancestors with reverence, and does not take change lightly. More often than not, he is possessed with a dry humor. And if by some insane impulse you smack him on the cheek, don't wait for him to turn the other one. Just duck immediately. He is undemonstrative, and if you're lucky enough to have him for a friend, you know that under that cold crust is a furnace of warmth and love. He will share your sorrows, revel in your joys, and can be counted on to contribute to your well-being in time of need. He is quite a breed. He's an Eastern Shoreman. Scorchy Taws, one in our Del Marvelous Land for WBOC News. Coming up next on Outdoors Del Mar, get ready for fun, sun, and plenty of free family activities as the official kickoff to summer gets underway in Ocean City, Maryland. Outdoors Del Marvo will be right back. You're watching Outdoors Del Marva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Andrew Taz. We're back here in Ocean City, Maryland, your family friendly seaside resort right in your own backyard. And it's a beautiful day here. Finally, the sun is shining. And I'm joined with Donna Abbott, a tourism director of Ocean City. Hey, Donna. Hi, Andrew. How are you? Good, thanks. And I hear that uh, this is probably the official kickoff of summer here, right? That, that's it. Spring Fest is here, and that means the summer is starting in Ocean City, Maryland. We couldn't be happier about that. And Donna, I know myself and my family are really looking forward to the summer here. You know, what are some things that we can look forward to? Well, you know, with Spring Fest, we have the live music, arts, crafts, lots of good food, including our Eastern Shore favorites. And then coming up this summer, we've got activities going on just about every weekend, if not every day, including movies on the beach, concerts on the beach. We have our fireworks on the beach, concerts in our park. So it's going to be a great summer here in Ocean City. There's plenty of free fishing to do out here at the beach, as well as spend the afternoon on the beach soaking up the sun and of course <laughs> Ocean City's legendary boardwalk. Our beach is always free and fishing is fabulous here in Ocean City. We've got some bayside areas that you can fish from, the fishing pier at the beach, you can charter a boat and then of course as you mentioned the boardwalk. In fact this year we just completed the second phase of our boardwalk reconstruction project so all the boards are in, everything's looking great with the summer season. Well Donna I have three boys and they all have a sweet tooth and obviously there's plenty of places out here on the boardwalk to get some yummy snacks so where else in town can we go? Well of course the boardwalk is famous for its snacks but yes you can go some other places including Northside Park where in the summer during July and August on Sunday evenings we have our Sundays in the park as in <laughs> ice cream Sundays. And this year we're going to have fireworks at the end of the concerts every Sunday night so we're very excited about that new activity and enhancing our Sundays in the park as well. All right, well, Donna, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us. You're welcome, Andrew. So for fun, sun, plenty of free family events, Ocean City, Maryland, a family-friendly seaside resort right in your own backyard. And we'll be right back. Coming up next on Outdoors Del Marva, your latest viewer videos and pictures. Outdoors Del Marva viewer pictures are sponsored by Wink Sporting Goods. And we'll be right back. You're watching Outdoors Del Marva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Sponsored by Ocean City Tourism. Shorts Marine. Shooter's Choice. Sussex Outdoors. And Aurora Agronomy. 
Time now to take a look at some of the pictures and videos sent in by our own Outdoors Del Marva viewers. Check out this turkey bag by Rick Van Voorst of Milford. This gobbler weighed in at 20 pounds, 5 ounces, and had four beards. One last rockfish caught by Ken Coons on opening day near the Calvert Cliffs area. <laughs> nice fish. All right, Willie, I guess that wraps up another week of adventures for us and uh, kind of a rough one. How are those sea legs holding up? Oh, they're coming back, Andrew. We got some revenge on that guy at the table, though, yeah. later on. Until next time, for my partner, Andrew Tallis, I'm Captain Willie Dykes, reminding you to get outdoors, Del Marva. Yeah.